This video is gonna be really fun and really satisfying. Look at that creamy paint, oh my God. We're gonna muck around with impasto, which is in layman's terms, paint, but it's thick. I'm gonna give you exactly what you want. The most satisfying feelings possible. Look at that gorgeous color. Ah, oh, look at that. Isn't that nice? Just that scrape. Well, oh, let's move it up a bit. Let's get more intense. Look at this beautiful, rich, orangey red. Here we go. Oh yeah, look at that texture. Look at that thick, gorgeous texture. Something tells me this is why Bob Ross would talk in this voice because it's just so relaxing and satisfying to watch paint flow and scrape. Oh my God, yes. I mean, this is proof that honestly, sometimes the simplest texture and the right range of colors can really produce results that just feel right. You know, the sort of thing that you just wanna, wanna have around all the time and just carry it around with you, display like. I love satisfying paint goops. Oh, hey, this is my new merch design. What? I mean, you said my other shirt was dirty too, but no, that's just the altered. I have uh, my Swatch shirt design in graphite as well. I'm really excited to bring in a new line of merch that I'm excited to wear, which is merch that really mixes with art. We actually turned one of my abstract mop paintings into a shirt design that I think looks really cool. To celebrate the launch of the new merch and the new website, I'm putting 10% off of everything for two weeks. 10% off of all of our new merch and all of our digital products Anything and everything you get is a huge support to me and the studio and everything we do here. Go check it out, links in the description. 10% off of everything, jazzastudios.com. Check out the merch and digital products, two weeks only. All right, there you are. I think we just, good. nice solid little, little bah! You click here for a satisfying video, you'll get it. But first you'll bah! get a merch plug. Let's go. These are impasto mediums. These are professional ways of making impasto paint. We'll start mucking around with that, but apparently you can make your own. Let's muck around in the safest way possible first. This is impasto. This is paint. Now, the concern I sort of have is about pigment. It's about color because impasto looks white. I'm just gonna put as a reference here, the original blue and you can, you can see it's lighter. Oh. oh yeah. Wow, that looks nice. All right, bit of yellow, bit of impasto mix. I'm just curious if we lose much of the color. It's slightly, Diluted, but really not a lot. If I put this side by side and then maybe mix in the middle, obviously we get our green and the textures already are just starting to, starting to pop. Well, I mean, let's go full impasto, shall we? Let's embrace the impasto. So in theory, this will be a slightly teal sort of blue. Already, like, isn't this satisfying? So like think green horizon, but I'm gonna blend it with the blue halfway through so it's a little more suggestive. It's meant to look rough and a little more asymmetrical, but I wanna see if I can bring a little bit of the satisfying clean texture back in. So to do that, let's go with a nice orange. Oh, look at that color. Look yeah. at that color. I think I need to, st I'm gonna go, I gotta build up. So green first. See, this is like way messy and like it's easy to spread everywhere and yet it's so fun. I want the, oh no, what is that? Uh, it's a bigger leaf now, uh, and it's a bigger stem. Oh, this is the worst flower ever. It's a dabble, I'm not committed to a result yet. This is objectively worth like 20 bucks. Would you pay 20 bucks for that? Uh, I think I know what the problem is. Your lack of skill? <laughs> Um, no, it's not my lack of skill, Gareth. It's the fact that I'm working with all these hoity-toity, high-end expensive Ugh. materials and it's blocking me from being creative. I need to work in a more relatable way. Exactly. I'm gonna home make my impasto and use cheap sh** paint. That will make for better results, logically. Starting off with the first one that I came across with, baby powder and PVA. They just sort of used a one-to-one -one mix. I'm just gonna work this all into itself and really apply pressure. Now let's get the good stuff. This is what we want. This is the stuff. Cheap purple, let's go. We'll divide this in half and make our first cheap homemade batch. It, it has lightened though, hasn't it? Yes, 
quite a bit. So maybe that just is revealing that there's less pigment. Because I mix that with less of my homemade mix. It's really interesting. It's really lightening. That's so interesting that, that uh, the expensive stuff didn't lighten so much. All right, we, we actually have to solve this mystery. I'm going to make the same homemade impasto mix, but this time I am going to do both of the expensive colors for comparison because I have to know, was it solely the cheap paint that made it go all pastel like that? Now I have to say, and I don't wanna to get too carried away with this now because I'm trying to keep the experiment even, but I'm really excited by the fact that I have control over the viscosity by adding more powder as I want to thicken it up. Now, I did rein it in and go back just a little bit because I'm trying to keep the comparison equal, but just worth noting because this could be really useful if it works well for a bunch of different textures or thicknesses or sort of approaches I go for later. And now with another homemade impasto mix, this time I mix the expensive red and purple next to my cheap red and purple mixes. I tried to make sure I had roughly the same amount of paint and impasto mix as with my previous pastel results with the cheap paint. That's amazing. So the cheap paints, there's not enough pigment there for it to be stretched out into the impasto medium. The expensive paints, when I say expensive, the purple was $24.99, so 25 bucks, and the red was 20 bucks. So when you have a collection of colors, you're spending hundreds of dollars for a reasonable collection. I was gonna mix cheap paint with the homemade impasto mix and compare it to professional paint and professional impasto, but this has proved that that is not being favorable to the impasto mix. So I'm, I'm not gonna use cheap paint. I'm just gonna stick to my expensive paint and compare homemade impasto to studio impasto. First of all, I had to put down the original colors unmixed onto the paper just so that everything has a clean comparison as to how diluted the colors are from the original. So my first impasto is the one I've been using, PVA and baby powder. I just wanted to see it in the context of everything else, but at this stage, I have a bit of trust in this one. It seems to work pretty well. Next, modeling paste. This looks like gesso. It's very white. And sure enough, everything I mix in with it gets much lighter. However, while it is lighter, it is very nice to apply. I wanna find a, a different use for this. I think this could be great for different mediums or projects. Next, plaster of Paris and PVA. This seems a little counterintuitive in my head. I would imagine it would end up crusty or cracking and maybe it will in the end. It mixes up reasonably well if a little grainy and applies okay if a little meh. Next a recommendation is to use baking soda and Mod Podge. And this was awful, truly awful. Just like mixing thin sand with paint, which is not great. You know, everything looked really grainy and even sparkly weirdly. Also wasn't too sure it wasn't actually bubbling as I was applying it or mixing it. And last but not least, an impasto medium mix, just so that I have something a little more high end to compare to aside from the original paints. As you can see, they all have a little bit of a different effect going down. There are some that I just really wouldn't use for anything, but a lot of them actually, I think, could have practical applications in various mediums. Now on to some impasto painting. Starting off with the impasto medium. This is apparently the way it's meant to be done, mixing with the medium itself. The colors really retained their original pigments for the most part, which is really, really cool. I've decided to work in layers, starting off with a really dark, and in fact, rather than going straight to impasto, as you can see, I've used this dimension acrylic sort of thick 
medium all over the base and mix the impasto with some dark blues and purples and then started to blend those in, creating a bit of a base that I could do my painting on top of. Given I have blues and purples in a dark background, I thought I could mix a bit of a teal for the foreground with a complementary orange. As well as some purple shadows and white highlights, it was from here that I started to work in the impasto texture. And just like I alluded to earlier, sometimes it starts to really work and then I do another stroke and then I have to fix it or overwork another area to balance it out. I am new to this. Abstract art is not my strength and anyone who's watched the channel for any period of time knows that I lean more towards comic books and cartoons, but I also love trying new mediums and I love the look of a good impasto painting. So I tried to do a bit of a portrait with a moody feel, like a lone warrior standing in a storm surrounded by fire. Next, I thought I'd break it up in the middle and use the most satisfying medium, which frankly was the modeling paste. This stuff was really nice because it's just so thick and creamy. I don't have to mix any powder or glues. It's just as it is plus paint. So I mixed a variety of colors from like an, an orangey red all the way to a bright yellow. I thought I'd work to the strengths of what is appealing about impasto and that is both the mixture of texture and three dimensionality, but also simplicity by having a simple gradient from red to light yellow and a really simple application of textures. I thought this could stand a chance of looking pretty cool. So now it's battle time to put the improvised homebrew impasto medium up against actual impasto medium. And the winning medium I chose was PVA and baby powder. Very similar to work with, just not as pleasant as impasto medium, but I thought it could create a similar effect, if slightly chunkier. And I decided to learn from the lessons I'd had so far. I thought my previous impasto painting was a little too complex, a little too chunky from the earliest layers. So I tried to start with a little more subtlety. Brushing on a mix of green and yellow and slowly gradienting in a little bit of yellow and working in some streaks for a really cool directional effect. Then again, trying to work to the strengths of impasto, I thought I'd lay on some thick but simple appealing silhouette shapes that I could work some texture on top of. After a layer of foundational shapes was put down, it was time to start working in some impasto texture, which immediately started looking really awful to me. So I slooped over it with a few rapid strokes that improved it, but I was losing confidence in this by the second. With a fairly whatever, weird bird shape thing in the middle of the page, I thought, screw it, I can't get any worse. Well, that's not true, but I can't impress myself much more, so might as well get dramatic. With some big yellow scrapes on either end to create some sunbeams to try and frame it or rescue what I had, but in the end, this was pretty underwhelming to me and not because of the medium, but because of my lack of experience with it. All in all, it wasn't too bad an improvised impasto mix. I reckon it could be refined, but for what it's trying to achieve, I reckon you could do some pretty cool stuff with it. I just didn't. <laughs> In conclusion, I still have no idea what I'm doing, but I did try and put impasto in the professional sense up against the homebrew methods. And the only conclusion I could draw is whatever works for you, but you sort of got to know how to do it. And that I don't know yet. But with that said, this one I would say is the least professional mix because it's literally just modeling paste and color. And I think it looks the coolest. It could even go, the other way around and look like fire or something. I don't know. That definitely gets that thick impasto texture that I really like. But I think I have the tendency to go too literal or when I try and go abstract, just not be good at it. <laughs> Let me know in the comments what I did right, what I did wrong. Maybe I need to go bigger. Let me know in the comments. Let me know what else you want me to try. I'm going mad with art and creativity. <laughs> uh, remember that time I did bleach? Did bleach art? And I said, if this video hit, gets 
a, a million views. I'll do the big, I'll do the big one. I'm doing a big one because I got a million views. So, well, let's do that again. If this video gets a million views, then I am gonna paint on the biggest canvas I can find in pasta. I'm gonna commit and make it work. It's gonna be cool. This video is just a taste tester. Ten percent off of all merch. Go check out the link in the description. Oh, Digital products and all that stuff. Everyone's clicking off anyway. You disgust. So I'm just gonna say the same thing. Terrible. Ten percent off. How much? Do it. 10% off for Ten. two weeks. <laughs> Go check it out. Check it out. Ah. Let me know what you think of the new merch. It's bloody brilliant.